Welcome back to Face the State on this Sunday morning, a special edition of Face the State from the state capitol. We are joined now by the leaders of the House, the House Speaker for the Democrats, Joe Arasimowitz, and for the Republicans, Minority Leader Themis Claritus. We thank you for being with us here today. Thanks for and having us. I'll let you have the first response, Leader Claritus. What did you think of the governor's speech? I didn't see much applause from you. Well, I have very serious concerns about the fact that this budget is targeting the middle class of Main Street America. They are going to be affected the most by this budget. And I know it's the first day of the budget process and we're all going to be going through uh, the committee processes and we're all going to have our input. But um, we can't support something that is going to affect your average person who relies on every penny. Speaker Aaron Summers, what is the likelihood of the governor's budget passing as it is, as he put it out there? As is, zero. Okay, so uh, what, just, what just things didn't you like about it? No, look, it's, it's the starting process. Think this governor has to present a budget on February 20th. We gave him two extra weeks, but it's still February 20th. He doesn't, he's not sure what bills are working their way through the committee, whether they're getting the hearings, whether they're going to move forward. The revenue estimates are just that. They're estimates. We have no clue. So it really is the starting point for a discussion. What's your hunch on tolls? Which, I'm hopeful. which program do you like? I, the all-encompassing tolls. We have too many people coming through the state of Connecticut that ride for free while we go through their states we pay. I'd like to get it structured to where the majority of the money's coming from out-of-state individuals, and I think we can get there. Do you want more than 50 gantries like the governor wants? I don't even think, well, by the time we do move forward, I don't know that we'll even need gantries. Uh, technology is moving so quickly with these that it may be a single camera on a single pole next to a highway. Well, that's what he means, but but but, yeah. but how many stations would you like, you know, are you comfortable sure. with? I'm open to the discussions. You know, this 82, 92, 112 number I've heard, I think that's all ridiculous. It's in the early stages. We have to get permitting from the federal government, and then we'll move forward. Senator Fasano, who was on before you, says he wants no tolls at all. Do you share that view, yes, or is there a room for compromise? No, I mean, I my problem, there's several problems we have with it, but the first problem is this notion that the only way to fund transportation is by putting in tolls is just a falsehood. It's not true. We have hundreds of millions of dollars going in to the special transportation fund now from sales tax from cars. We have our prioritized progress program. Now, I understand that with that money means you are not going to do every single project you want. But I don't know any household, any small business, any big business, any of us that does every single project they want. And government needs to work more like that because the problem is tolls or fees or taxes or whatever you want to call them ensures that you have less money in your pocket at the end of the day than you have when you started. Republicans. Well, well let's be clear on the tolling. Massachusetts and New York are doing very well because of the infrastructure improvements. The big dig that many years ago we laughed about has led to property being reclaimed, partnerships happening, Jamaica Plains, which you once didn't want to live, now being a, a place to go. There is not a plan on the table other than tolls that doesn't make the Connecticut resident pay for the entire share. Out-of-state residents need to pay their fair share. You've, you know, Republicans have less clout than they did in the last session. How can you stop this? Well, clearly it's going to be more difficult and as the speaker said and I mentioned this is day one of the budget process and this is something that is educating the public this is something that is educating the legislature to decide on where this is going I mean the the interesting part about the 82 toll gantries um, or whatever number it is but it's a huge amount of, of numbers is they started with figuring out how much money do we need to backfill this budget, and then they move the gantries. And that's why there's so many. That's why these proposals show so many tolling gantries, because otherwise it would not be physically feasible to bring in enough money. And that is not a way to balance a budget. Let's talk about some of the other things he talked about, these syntaxes, vaping, plastic bags. Do you support that? I am very interested in learning more about the proposals. We know what the dangers of early smoking and vaping are having on our youth. We understand what plastic bags are doing to our environment. Um, so we should have those discussions. Sugary tax, uh, the amount of money we spend as a state on health care is influenced by people's diet and their, and their lifestyles. So can we influence those by imposing a tax? Sure, but I need to see the numbers, what it does to our economy. It's, is, is that something Republicans can get on board with? Well, first of all, they originally called those uh, those proposals we were just speaking of public health initiatives. They are plain and simple tax revenue initiatives. Okay, and, and, I, and I think what bothers me is if they weren't tax revenue initiatives, if they weren't a way to bring more revenue into the state and take more money out of your pocket, why 
did he put a tax on and propose a tax on sugary drinks when artificial sweetener in my opinion and in many people's opinions is just as dangerous if not more than sugar it does not seem um, that is consistent you're picking out that what's the difference tell me what the difference Sounds is between like a, for a sugary drink and it is inconsistent and that's why it is not a public health initiative it is a tax revenue way to take more money out of people's pockets let's move on to another facet of the governor's speech a higher minimum wage across our state we've been interviewing some business leaders on face of state in the last month and we're getting mixed reviews some are all for it some are against it saying that it will dissuade them from hiring or expanding what do you think about that Can there have been republicans in the past in this legislature for years that sometimes there have been they voted for minimum wage sometimes they voted against it i think we have to have a very strong and serious conversation of what the effects of it are for example you go into any mcdonald's in the state that have been renovating a lot in the past year and you walk in you don't talk to a live person you hit the buttons on the kiosk and then one live person hands you the bag that is epidemic that is a problem because businesses in this state are trying to figure out how they can afford to stay in business so what's going to happen and that's why this conversation is so important what's going to happen is if you have 10 employees and you now have to pay them more there's going to be less people working but making more money T time is relentless and we're almost out of it so yeah, I'll give you the final the, word the short answer seconds. is we need to be able to pay people a wage that allows them to live in the state uh, I, I think we can get there uh, business leaders are embracing it and we'll we'll get it done this session House Speaker Joe Arsimowitz Minority Leader Themis Clatters we thank you both for being on the program this Sunday morning we thank you